Well, as we heard right before the break, E.B. White gave us one of the most quotable lines about living here in the Pine Tree State. I would rather feel bad in Maine than feel good anywhere else. But his legacy goes beyond his books and his essays and his correspondence. White left a real impact on the people of Hancock County. In 1995, our Dave Allers learned about how he embodied some real Maine ethic. I'm behind on my correspondence, and this letter is overdue. The letter is from Elwin Brooks White, E.B. White to those who have read him, Andy to his closest friends. Many of those friends lived right here in Maine. White had become an established literary figure by the time he moved here. His columns were read by people in big cities, people for whom rural life was exotic. White was their tour guide, writing about the pigs, geese, chickens, and other inhabitants of his farm in Brooklyn. His neighbors looked upon him with reverence and respect. Maine writer Sanford Pippen remembers his first look at E.B. White. It came at the age of 13 while sitting in Dr. Dick Adams' dentist chair in Ellsworth. He hauled me right out of the chair and said, Sandy, look down there on the street. There's the country's greatest essayist walking down Main Street. And all I could see was this old looking, to me, probably my age now in his 50s, this mean looking guy with a Mackinac on. He looked like a local man just walking down Main Street. I, I that was part of the magic of White's time in Maine. He began life here as a summer person. He was soon thought of as a native. He was just a regular fellow. He raised, had chickens raised uh, and sold the eggs to the store in Brooklyn, traded them for food and that sort of thing. <coughs> he was just like the man next door, and unpretentious as could be. Pretension was White's favorite target. He often pointed the criticism at himself. They feel that it is presumptuous of a writer to assume that his little excursions or his small observation will interest the reader. There is some justice in that complaint. I have always been aware that I am by nature self-absorbed and egotistical. To write of myself to the extent I have done indicates a too great attention to my own life, not enough to the lives of others. The criticism was unwarranted. E.B. White's life was spent calling our attention to important issues. Oil, unemployment, nuclear power plants, the spruce budworm, the SST, land use and zoning, the plight of the small hospital. E.B. White is regarded as a main writer, and yet in the truest sense of the phrase, he is not. White was born in New York. He spent his summers on the Belgrade Lakes as a boy. He first moved to his farm in North Brooklyn in 1938, packing his Underwood typewriter and a keen appreciation of what it meant to be a citizen of Maine. It included a clear view of the lighter side. His humor was a lot like the Maine humor, you know, that we grew up with, yeah. the yeah. way Maine people were the same way. They were irreverent, too. Another day, I found myself on a sofa between the chip of wood, gnawed by the beaver, and an ornery hood I had once worn in an academic possession. What I really needed at the moment was the beaver himself to eat the hood. I shall never wear the hood again, but I have too weak a character to throw it away, and I do not doubt that it will tag along with me to the end of my days, not keeping me either warm or happy, but occupying a bit of my attic space. That was Dave. Allers reporting in 1995. The Children's Museum and Theater of Maine, by the way, is staging a production of Charlotte's Web through the end of the month. And tonight, in fact, at 5.30, the Penobscot Marine Museum and Carver Memorial Library, they're holding an event celebrating the author. You are encouraged to bring your favorite reading to share and, of course, a picnic dinner to enjoy on the property there.